beautiful creative people. This is Kyla Give Hand of Giving Hands Creative and I'm coming to you today with a new Hump Day Wednesday or Hump Day How To um, which you know comes out on Wednesdays and I haven't been doing them. I missed several weeks um, and yeah I've got to get myself back into the groove. So here we go. Hump Day How To. So I want to show you how to make these um, little quick what I'm just calling fill guides or fill notes, um, notebooks, because they're just these little uh, notebooks that you can fill with paper and use them to take notes. For instance, this one has Bristol paper in it, so I could do a little bit of wet media on it, but I could do markers. Um, I could use India ink, Sumi ink. I could do um, probably do some dry media like. Uh, pan pastels, chalk pastels, um, anything that would be, you know, and then I could even go into a little bit of watercolor very lightly, um, some stamping, I could do a bunch of different things in here, or I could just use it for text to just, to just write. Um, but it's something you can make really quick, simple. Let's say you're going to go out on a day trip to, say, the museum, um, and you might just take a small little notebook like this just for that particular journey of your day. Um, and I like to call those fill notes, or fill notebooks, fill guides, however you want to um, think about that. So this is one that I've made. And then here's another one that's even more um, obvious where it came from, what the cover is. And it has a little rubber band closure there. And this one has a bunch of different types of paper in it. So, uh, watercolor paper, calligraphy paper, a, a piece of recycled art, uh, but it's water. It's a uh, letterpress paper, scrapbooking paper. This is a doily that I that I put in here. Um, more watercolor paper, recycled art, um, scrapbooking paper. So it has you know a bunch of different papers in it. And again, it can be used just as like a little junk journal, or um, you could use it to put, you know, collage item and items, bits and pieces of your day, whatever. Uh, but they're quick and easy to make, and they're recycled. They're they're made from recycled um, objects. So I want to share that with you today. So this is the Wednesday, the Hump Day How To tutorial. So for this, I just want to share with you the supplies I'm going to be using for this paper, obviously. And for this one, I'm just going to use Bristol paper. I have my clips that I'll be using to hold the paper together as I sew. Obviously, needle. And for this one, I'm actually going to use dental floss as my thread. Um, you're going to need or want to have some sort of paper cutter. You're going to need or want to have, and sometimes I use this larger paper cutter so I have multiples, a cutting mat, a cutting tool, a bone folder, and all to punch your holes for when you're ready to sew. And obviously a ruler for measuring and then the featured item in today's hump day how to is a cereal box so I have two different ones and I don't actually eat cereal so it's kind of weird that I have these but this one was given to me by a friend after her kid finished his cereal and this one uh, is I inherited from my nephew who's currently staying with us for a short time uh, he had cereal and so I said don't throw that box away I want to use it so and then these came from again the nephew he had another box of cereal so these two were take were out of one box so if you're making this size journal you can make two from one box this one I didn't do anything to the cover because I wanted it to be obvious that this cover was a recycled cover. I did put the little sticker on here that says hashtag hello world. Other than that, um, I didn't do anything to the cover of this one. And for this one I used um, waxed linen thread. And then for this one I painted the cover. 
Um, but I didn't do anything to the outside, inside because I wanted the inside to be obvious that it was recycled material. Um, and I painted the outside using Liquitex paints, golden paints, and some ink sprays. So you can, you know, spend as much time or as little time as you want on those um, in terms of the cover and what you want to do to the cover. All right, so let's walk through how to make it. So what I think I'll do is just walk you through how to actually construct the book, and then I'll do a one of them with um, a painted cover, but I'll speed through that part so that you don't have to watch paint dry. Fun? Fun. Okay. So here we go. Let's start with this box. So the first thing you're going to do is you have to prep your box um, in terms of getting it cut and ready. So you want to find where the box, where the seams are on the box because each box is going to have seams where they have put the box together. So for this one I'm going to start by opening, the, obviously the top's already open because I've used it um, before. Ideally you want to find a box that has the tab intact because for instance on this one I left the tab piece intact so that I could then fold the tab into and, and almost use it as a way to close a closure for the book. Except mine doesn't want to work right now. Hello. Okay. As a closure for the book. So you don't have to have that. Obviously, this one does not. I did not save the um, tabbed portion because I knew I was going to do this little rubber band closure trick that I got from Sea Lemon, by the way. And I'll put the link for that, how to do that in the bottom here. Okay, so we're back to our box. We already have one open end because that's how you get to the goodies inside. Then we're going to open up the bottom portion. So we just want to open up all the seams of the box. And I try to do it carefully, um, but you know, there's always it's a box. It's paper. All right? There's always a little bit of tearing that happens. But be as careful as you can when you're opening the box. And then my other seam is right here along this edge. So I'm going to go ahead and detach those. Okay. I love that this has stuff on the inside. I didn't even notice that. How awesome. Okay. So... Once you have your box open, you're going to figure out which portion is the book. Because now that I've opened it, obviously the box looks very different, right? But I know that it's the portion that has my tab on it. So I want to cut out just this section of the box. So I'm going to take my ruler and my cutting tool. And I'm just going to line up my ruler right on the edge there and slice those two pieces apart. Then I'm going to do the same on this end. And they usually have these, um, these sort of scored lines where you can see, and I just use those as my guide. It makes it a lot easier than having to measure and line up anything. Now I don't throw these pieces away. I'll show you at the end what I do with, with the pieces. So because I know this is going to be my book and my flap, and I know it's going to go this way, I have this extra piece that's hanging over, right? Now I could choose to cut this piece off and have a book that does this, right? But I wouldn't have really a flap here to stick in, nothing to um, sort of stick through. So I'm going to cut this this flap off. And again, I'm going to save that piece for something else. All right, so now what we have is just one piece, and it still has the tab attached. Now, this has a little bit of glue here. I'm not even going to worry about that. I'm not going to touch it. I'm going to leave it right like it is. So the next step, once you have your piece cut out, is you're going to take it and you're going to fold it in half, but you're going to exclude this as a part of the um, folding. So you're going to... Wherever this piece ends, you're going to fold 
right to that uh, line. So you don't want to go over the line where the tab is. Okay. Here's where the bone folder comes in handy because these boxes need to get a good crease on them. Okay. So now that's the fold of my book. Awesome, awesome. Okay, so this piece is the piece that's going to fold over. Now, before you do any sort of cutting of anything else, the next thing you need to do is measure. You need to measure the size of your actual book. Again, excluding the flap. Because that's going to help you know how long your papers need to be. So this measures... It measures 10 and 2 eighths, but I am going to take my pencil and just write. I'm actually going to write it at, let's see, 10 and 2 eighths is where it ends, but I'm going to come back a little bit to, to, to the 10, 10 inch mark. And I'll show you why I'm doing less than the 2 eighths there in a second. Okay, so I know that my page, my papers, need to be 10 inches long, 10 inches wide, and this is 6 and 2 eighths, and of course your box is going to be um, based on whatever measurements you come up with. So the measurements, the, num the, the numerical numbers don't really matter that much, but we, we need them in order to measure our paper. Yours will be different depending on the box you're using. Okay, so six and two eighths. Perfect. So now my next task is to take my papers and measure those measurements out. Now what I like to do is just get a sense of... Cool. Because it matters which way you fold the paper, right? Paper has a grain, and you always want to check that grain to see which way you're folding. So this is Bristol paper, and it's a little thicker paper, obviously. But what I do know is that I need 10 inches across and 6 and 2 eighths in the other direction. So I'm going to move my cutting mat. Grab my paper cutter. And let's go 10 10 in this direction. And in this direction we're going to go 6 and 2 eighths. I'm actually going to do 6 and 1 eighth. I'm going to leave a one-eighth difference. Okay. Six and two-eighths. Then I like to go ahead and fold the first page and just make sure everything is as it should be. Again, using my ball folder to crease the fold. I'm going to bring my book back over. And I, leaving the taking off an eighth of an inch gives you a little bit of room at the top and a little bit at the bottom so you want to just kind of center it right into that space awesome that's gonna be perfect okay so now I can cut the others using that same measurement All my page sheets back and I nest them inside of one another to make a signature. Bring my book back, nest that in there. Awesome. Okay, now what you'll notice when you put your papers in and everything has been measured, when you bring that flap over, you're going to get a little bit of a buckle. Here's how I remedied that. I measure about an eighth of an inch over. Well, let me show you the real way that I do it. <laughs> I 
I bring my scoring board up. I place this in the scoring board. And wherever this line for the flap, wherever that line hits, I go one eighth over. And I make a score line there. And this, this paper is pretty thick, so I'm doing it several times just to get a good crease there. So now I have an additional score line that I can use to fold. So I'm going to fold on that score line that I just created. And it gets a little tricky because this, this box isn't too keen on folding. It's a little resistant, but if you are persistent, it will give. And once it does, you want to make a little crease. Now, in essence, what you're doing when you make that score mark is you are creating a squared edge. Okay. See how now I have a squared edge there. And what that does is it allows for a little extra space when you fold. Okay? So it just makes a nice, crisp square, an eighth of an inch wide. So, next step, with the papers in, I like to put a little clip on and close while it's closed. And I like to measure where I need to cut for my flap. Okay. Now, if your box is busy like mine is, busy with an image on the front, you need to mark with something that is visible that you'll be able to actually see. So I'm just going to use... See if I can't. I'm gonna find something that I can use. I'm thinking maybe a red sharpie will do the trick. All right, so now I'm gonna zoom in just a little bit so you can get a better idea of what I'm doing here. So right where my flap dips down. I'm going to make a mark on my box right where that happens on both sides. Okay. Then I'm going to bring out my cutting mat. I like to just double check it without the clip on it to make sure. Take my papers out and I'm going to take a ruler, I'll use my big one, and my box cutter. I'm just going to line up my ruler with where those marks are. I'm just going to slice from dot to dot. Okay. Once I have that, those line, that slit is very thin, but I like to just see if it can still fit through there. And it can. Okay. Awesome sauce. So now we want to try it with the papers inside of the book and make sure it still works. And it does. Okay. So our last and final step for construction is to sew the book together. So I like to place my pages, pull back a little bit, I like to place my pages, remember I left room at the top and bottom, so I like to make sure they're nice and centered in between that space. And I eyeball it. I'm not measuring anything. Remember, we want this to be kind of quick and simple, so, um, you know, perfection has its place. I'm not sure this is it. <laughs> I don't even measure where my three holes are going to go, because I'm going to do a simple, what's called a pamphlet stitch, also known as a butterfly stitch sometimes. Um, 
and it just has three holes, usually an inch from the top, an inch from the bottom, and in the center, or half an inch from top, half an inch from the bottom, and right in the center of those two. I literally just eyeball it. Again, you could measure it, but I just do sort of a little eyeball thing. Mm, that's about half an inch. Mm, that's about half an inch. And then I find the center point in between those two, and that looks about right. So now I have my three holes punched. I'm going to thread, I'm going to take some dental floss, and I'm going to do four lengths of the book, because when I use dental floss, I like to double it. Okay. So that gives me enough to do that. Thread my needle. And double it. Then I like to tie a knot at the end. If my fingers will work with me. And because, you know, floss is rather thin, I end up having to do a double, sometimes even a triple knot, just to make it a bigger knot, because I don't want it to go through the hole I just made for sewing. So I'm going to triple this one, just to be safe. And again, the knot is not a required element. You don't have to knot it beforehand. Okay, so a simple pamphlet stitch. You can start from the inside or the outside. If you start from the outside, you will have a dangling piece of thread. So if that's the look you want, you want to start from the outside. I, want, I like mine to be on the inside, so I'm going to come through and I'm going to leave a tail that is basically where that knot is. If you did not put a knot here, you could just hold it with your thumb and do the same thing. So from the inside out and then from the outside in all the way down to the last hole and go inside out and then bring that pull it nice and taut and bring it back through the center. Now when I come back through the center I like to bring my needle on the opposite side of where this is so that I have one tail, one piece of thread on each side of the long string in the center. Okay. So I'm just bringing that up through the middle. And then again, I like to make sure everything's nice and tight. I'm going to make one knot. So a square knot, basically, right on top of the floss that's already there. And then I'm going to snip. Now that knot that's in there, um, I, I did that to show you that you can have a knot. It's not necessary um, if you use your thumb to hold it. Take my clip off. Close and sort of crease my book nicely. Pull my flap in, and my book is done. I have a quick, easy, recycled, environmentally safe, <laughs> environmentally conscious uh, fill guide. It has a square crease here at the edge so that my pages don't buckle too much. Now, I could take this a step further and I could uh, paint my cover if I didn't want to have this koala bear on the front. But I like that, right? Because if I take out the I, if I take out the O and put an I, that says Kyla. What? Okay. <laughs> so this has been um, a really quick and easy book to make. Now, I told you you could get two out of one box, right? So here's the rest of your box. All you would do at this point, take your box. Cut off this extra flap, and you're basically repeating the same steps. Now, on this one, 
it has a little bit of a right it, it was already torn so I'm just getting rid of that anyway so take that off now with this one you can decide that you want to create a flap using that right you could totally do that I'm gonna think about whether or not I want to do that so first I'm going to fold into the center just like I did with the last one or sorry not into the center I'm going to make a center fold by folding to the, the flap but not over it I'm gonna bone my line down there that. imagine how fun this would be with kids right oh my gosh yes kids would love this right after they finish their cereal they get to make a book super awesome okay so now I could use this as a flap right I could mark my make my marks right here and this could be a flap I think I'm going to do that but on this one this is going to be the one that I demo as a painted cover so again like I said I'm going to speed through the painting process of it I'm just peeling this off to Now this one has a really coated front. I could use sandpaper to sort of scratch that up a bit. I think I'm going to start with some gesso and go from there. So uh, I'll be back at the end of painting my cover.
Okay, so the second book from that same box is done. And you notice that I put a little bit of uh, shimmering, I don't even know what this is called, it looks like the label has rubbed off, but it's like a shimmering spray mist that doesn't spray anymore because I think the clog, it has gotten clogged up. So, you know, just because it's a spray doesn't mean you can't use it um, to paint on with a brush, which is what I did. I just went lightly over it so that it would add a little shimmy because I was using craft paint for everything and craft paint is going to dry with a very uh, sort of chalky, opaque, um, dull finish. So I wanted it to have a little bit of shimmer so I added that over as the, the overlay. I'm very happy with it. It's awesome. I did forget <laughs> apparently somehow this sheet did not get in and punched which is so crazy but I used linen wax linen thread for this one um, just because I've got water paper in here which means I'm probably going to be using some sort of wet media and with that in mind um, I want to make sure I have a good sturdy uh, string there so I did go ahead and make a cut here for the flap and while I like it, it's I think the paint is making it a little difficult to come in and to you know get it in and out. Um, but it but it happens. I can make it happen. So there there you have it. Another book. So we have this one that is a painted cover, and I just again I started with gesso. I used three different craft paints, a key card for scraping those colors together just to start my foundation, and then I used. Uh, bubble wrap with some yellow paint on it and just went around in different spots. I used a the, the cap from a um, water bottle, dipped in some blue golden uh, manganese blue I think is how you pronounce that. I don't even really know how you say the color. Um, manganese blue hue is the color by golden and yeah, that's and then I went over with this yellowy spray using a paintbrush. I love it. Beauty Fell. Okay, so we have that one. We have the two that are painted covers. And then we have two that are that have just been left with the box cover showing. Awesome. So four books from two different boxes wonderfully recycled pieces that can be used for art journaling these two or for just uh, notes and writing and marker work doodling and you can pop these in your bag once you use them pop them on the shelf and move to the next one I am so sure that you can never have enough blank books so I hope this has been a helpful hump day how-to I would love to see photos of what you're creating if you decide to make some books um, out of your cardboard. Now you did see me go ahead and put gesso on these and what you can do with these is do the same technique as the painted journals. Just paint over them. You could use these as bookmarks. Um, you can make them be, you can cut them in half and use them as uh, planter labels. Like you could stick it inside your planter and write the word cilantro or basil or whatever it is you have growing if you're if you're a gardener um, especially an urban gardener you're growing things in your home uh, so lots of different things you can use with recycled materials so just want to point out one more time that for this video I use several different recycled items the box the bubble wrap is recycled this uh, cap for the um, water bottle is also recycled so, lots of ways to recycle goodies that you're using. Thank you, thank you so much for watching. And I'll see you next week. Fingers crossed if I can make a video happen. If not, I'll see you the week after. But this has been another hump day how-to. I'm Kyla Givehan from Giving Hands Creative. See you next week. Go ahead and make something beautiful. Bye now. Mm -hmm.